Magandang araw mga mag-aaral. Ako ang inyong guro, Daryl J. Mendros Malbin. In this video, I will use method of joints to solve a sample problem. A transmission tower is subjected to the wind loads shown. Determine the actual force in kilonewtons in each member. If in the problem you are asked to determine the actual force in each member, the ideal solution is method of joints. In method of joints, we are going to analyze each joint. However, you do note that in a joint, the maximum number of unknown forces should be equal to 2. Why? Because the free body diagram of a joint is a concurrent force system. And in a concurrent force system, there are only two equilibrium conditions, namely summation fx equal to zero and summation fy equal to zero. Therefore, the maximum number of unknown forces in a joint should be equal to two. First, we determine the support reactions. For the roller support at A, the reaction has one component, and it is normal or perpendicular to the support. Let's call this RA. For the hinge support at B, it has two components. A vertical component, BY, and a horizontal component, BX. First, let's solve for Bx by using the equilibrium condition, summation fx equal to zero. What is the correct direction of Bx? Notice that all the external forces are horizontal to the right. To balance these external forces, Bx should act to the left. Now going back to summation fx equal to zero and following the sign convention, positive to the right, negative to the left, we have three plus five plus seven kilonewtons minus bx equal to zero. Solving for bx, bx is equal to 15 kilonewtons. Next, we solve for Ra by taking summation moment at point B equal to zero. So summation moment at point B is equal to zero. What is the correct uh, direction of Ra? Notice that if we take summation moment at point B, all these horizontal external forces create a clockwise moment about point B. Therefore, to balance that, RA should create a counterclockwise moment about point B. And for that to be possible, RA should act downward. Now going back to summation moment at B, equal to zero, we have for the three kilonewton force, the moment arm is 1.8 times three, which is 5.4. And it's positive clockwise. For the five kilonewton force, the moment arm is 1.8 times two, or that is 3.6. Also clockwise positive. And for the 7 kilonewton force, the moment arm is 1.8. And it is also clockwise positive. And for RA, the moment arm is 2.55 times 2, or that is 5.1. And it is negative counterclockwise. This is equal to zero. Solving now for Ra, 
RA is equal to 9.18 kilonewtons. And lastly, to solve for BY, we simply use summation FY equal to zero. Notice that we have no vertical external force. Therefore, BY should balance RE. And if RE is downward, BY should be upward. Now, going back to summation FY equal to zero and following the sign convention positive upward and negative downward, we have negative RA or negative 9.18 plus BY is equal to zero. Therefore, BY is also equal to 9.18 kilonewtons. Next, we determine the dimensions of the tower vital to our solution. Let me draw a vertical line here. And another vertical line here. So that we have a right triangle. The base of which we need to determine. How? If this is 1.5 meters, this is also 1.5 meters. So this is 1.5 meters. We know this distance to be 2.55 times 2 or 5.1. So to get the base of the right triangle, we simply have 5.1 minus 1.5 divided by 2 is equal to 1.8 or the base of the right triangle. So this is 1.8 meters. This is also 1.8 meters. And now we have the slope of this. diagonal. We have its horizontal is 1.8 and its vertical is 1.8 times 3 or that is 5.4. Reducing this slope, this is also equal to 1 horizontal 3 vertical with the hypotenuse of square root of 10. Now we will also need this distance and this distance. And to solve for this distance, we simply have similar triangles. So let's name those distances. Let's call this distance x and this one distance y. So that by similar triangles, we have for the big triangle, the slope of which is 1 horizontal and 3 vertical. one horizontal three vertical is equal to we consider first for distance x for distance x we consider this right triangle the base is x and the altitude is equal to 1.8 times 2, or that is 3.6. Therefore, solving for x, 
x is equal to one point two meters. Next, we solve for distance y by considering this small right triangle, where in the base is y and the height is 1.8 meters. So doing the same, we have one third is equal to y over 1.8. Therefore, solving for distance y, y is equal to 0 0.6 meter. So x is equal to 1.2 meters and y is equal to 0 0.6 meters. So this is also 1.2 meters. This is also 0 0.6 meter. Which joint do we analyze first? To answer this question, you have to remember that in a joint, the maximum number of unknown forces should be 2. So let's see. For joint A, we have 1, 2 unknown forces. So we can start at joint A. For joint B, we have 1, 2 unknown forces. So we can also start at point B. At joint C, we have 1, 2, 3, 4 unknown forces. So we can't start at joint C. We may either start at joint A or joint B and work our way to the top. Now let me start with joint A. Let's draw the free body diagram of joint A. We have the downward support reaction, 9.18 kilonewtons. We have member AC and member AD, which has a slope of one horizontal, three vertical. The hypotenuse is a square root of 10. Next, we determine the correct directions of AC and ED if we can. So we have a downward 9.18 kilonewton force. To balance this, the vertical component of AD should act upward. And for that to be possible, AD should be tensile. When we say tensile, the force is away from the joint. And if AD is tensile, it means that its horizontal component acts to the right. And if its horizontal component acts to the right, AC should balance that. And for AC to balance that, AC should act to the left. Now let's apply the equilibrium conditions beginning with summation Fy equal to zero. Positive upward, negative downward. So we have negative 9.18. Positive AD, considering vertical component, we have three over a square root of 10. And this is equal to zero. Solving for AD, AD is equal to 9.68 kilonewtons, and this is tensile, or away from the joint. Next, let's have 
summation fx equal to 0. Positive to the right, negative to the left. We have negative ac plus ad, which is equal to 9.68. And considering horizontal component, we have 1 over square root of 10. And this is equal to 0. AC is equal to 3.06 kilonewtons. And this is compressive, meaning the force acts towards the joint. Now let's consider the free body diagram of joint B. We have an upward BY, 9.18 kilonewtons. We have BX to the left, 15 kilonewtons. We have member BC and member BE, which has a slope, one horizontal, three vertical, hypotenuse square root of 10. Now, if 9.18 kilonewtons is upward, the vertical component of BE should be downward to balance this force. That means that BE is compressive, meaning BE acts towards point B. So let's leave BC for the meantime and solve for BE by using the equilibrium condition summation Fy equal to zero. So we have positive 9.18, negative BE. Considering vertical component, we have 3 over square root of 10. And this is equal to 0. Solving for BE, BE is equal to 9.68 kilonewtons. And this is compressive, meaning BE acts towards point B. Now that we know force BE, we can determine the direction of BC. We have a 15 kilonewton force to the left, and we have BE, which is equal to 9.68 kilonewtons, which has a horizontal component to the right. Now, comparing the values 9.68 kilonewtons and 15 kilonewtons, BC should act to the right, same as the horizontal component of BE to help balance 15 kilonewton force. So, let's calculate for BC by using summation fx equal to zero. We have positive BC, negative BE, which is equal to 9.68. Considering horizontal, we have one over square root of 10. This should be positive, I'm sorry, because BE is to the right. We have negative 15, and this is equal to zero. Solving for BC, BC is equal to 11.94 kilonewtons, and this is compressive towards joint B. Now let's consider the free body diagram of joint C. At joint C, we have force AC, 
which is equal to 3.06 kilonewtons compressive. We also have force BC, which is equal to 11.94 kilonewtons compressive. We also have force in member CE and member CD. Now, there is no way for us to immediately determine the correct directions of CD and CE. So, we will assume that CD and CE are both tensile. We also need to determine their slope. Since CD and CE are identical, their slopes are also identical. Now, how do we solve for their slope? The vertical distance of this right triangle is 1.8 meters. So we need to determine this horizontal distance of the right triangle. But first, let's determine this distance. We already computed for this distance a while back from this small right triangle. So if this is 1.8 meters vertical distance in the right triangle, the horizontal, the horizontal distance is equal to 0 0.6 meters. This means that this is also equal to 0 0.6 meters. And to solve for this distance, we simply subtract 2.55 and 0 0.6. And that is equal to 1.95 meters. Therefore, we have 1.8 vertical, 1.95 horizontal. Or reducing that, we have a slope equal to 13 horizontal, 12 vertical, and hypotenuse is square root of 313. So there you have it, the slope of CD and CE. Now we're ready to solve for the magnitude of forces CD and CE. First, let's have summation Fy equal to zero. We have positive CD, considering vertical component, 12 over, over square root of 313. Positive CE, considering again vertical component, 12 over square root of 313. This is equal to zero. Simplifying the equation, this is equal to CD is equal to negative CE. This is our equation one. For equation two, we have summation fx equal to 0. We have negative cd, considering horizontal component, 13 over square root of 313. We have positive ce, considering horizontal component, 13 over square root of 313. Plus, 
3.06 minus 11.94 equal to 0. And this is our equation 2. Now, substituting equation 1 into equation 2, we simply substitute CD with negative CE. So that negative times negative CE is equal to positive CE times 13 over square root of 313. This quantity is similar to this quantity. So we multiply this by 2. And this is equal to simplifying now 3.06 minus 11.94 and transposing that to the right side to the, to the right side of the equation that is equal to 8.88 solving for ce ce is equal to 6.04 kilonewtons and this is in tension and for CD, that is negative CE or negative 6.04 kilonewtons. Now we have arrived at a negative value. This means that our assumed direction for CD, which is tensile, is wrong. The correct direction for CD is compression. So CD is compressive. Now let's consider the free body diagram of joint D. We have the horizontal external force acting to the right, 7 kilonewtons. We have member, force in member AD, which we have found out to be 9.68 kilonewtons tensile. We also have its slope, one horizontal, three vertical, hypotenuse square root of 10. We also have the force in member CD. Which is equal to 6.04 kilonewtons compression. And we have the unknown forces in member DH and member DF. We're going to assume their sense or direction as both tensile. DH has also a slope the same with AD. So first, let's have summation Fy equal to zero. We have positive DH considering vertical three over square root of 10. We have negative AD, which is 9.68 considering vertical component 3 over square root of 10. We have positive CD, 6.04, considering vertical component. We have to determine the slope of CD. We have 13 horizontal, 12 vertical, hypotenuse square root of 313. 
So this is 12 over square root of 313. This is equal to 0. Now we can solve for dh, which is equal to 5.36 kilonewtons, and dh is tensile. Next, we have summation fx equal to 0. We have positive df, positive dh, which is equal to 5.36, considering horizontal component, 1 over square root of 10. We have negative ad, which is 9.68, and considering horizontal component, 1 over square root of 10. We also have negative CD, 6.04, considering horizontal component, we have 13 over square root of 313, square root of 313, plus... 7 equal to 0. Solving for df, df is equal to negative 1.20 kilonewtons. The negative value means that our assumed direction for df, which is tensile, is wrong. df is compressive. So df is compressive. This time, let's consider the free body diagram of joint E. In joint E, we have Force in member CE, which we found out to be 6.04 kilonewtons tension. We also have force in member BE, which we have found out to be equal to 9.68 kilonewtons compressive and we have unknown forces in member EF and member EG which we now assume as tensile forces. The slope of CE is 13 horizontal, 12 vertical, hypotenuse square root of 313. EG and BE have the same slope, which is 3 vertical, 1 horizontal, square root of 10 hypotenuse. Now, let's have summation Fy equal to 0. So we have positive Eg considering vertical component 3 over square root of 10, negative Ce which is 6.04, Considering vertical, 12 over square root of 313. Positive BE, which is 9.68. Considering vertical, 3 over square root of 10. And this is equal to 0. Solving for EG, it is equal to negative... 5.36 kilonewtons. This means that our assumed direction for EG, which is tensile, 
is incorrect. EG should be compressive. Next, we have summation fx equal to zero. We have negative EF, negative EG, which is negative 5.36. So negative times negative, that's positive. 5.36, considering horizontal, 1 over square root of 10. Negative CE, which is 6.04, considering horizontal, 13 over square root of 313. Minus BE, which is 9.68, considering horizontal, 1 over square root of 10. And this is equal to 0. Solving for EF, EF is equal to negative 5.80 kilonewtons, which also means that our assumed direction for EF, which is tensile, is also incorrect. EF should be compressive. We now consider the free body diagram of joint F. At joint F, we have the forces in member DF and EF. Both DF and EF are compressive forces, wherein DF is equal to 1.20 kilonewtons and EF is equal to 5.80 kilonewtons. We also have the unknown force in member FG, which we now assume to be tensile, and force in member FH, which we now assume to be compressive. Their slope are equal but we need to determine that slope by considering this right triangle. We're going to consider this right triangle and we know this vertical distance to be 1.8 meters, but we don't know this horizontal distance. So we need this horizontal distance. First, we determine this distance to be equal to 0 0.6 meter. If you ask why, this is the reason. By similar triangles, we have known that this distance is equal to 0 0.6 meter with an altitude of 1.8 meters, meaning if this is 1.8 and this is also 1.8, their bases are ought to be equal. So they are both equal to 0 0.6 meter. Next, we have learned previously that this distance is equal to This distance is equal to 1.2 meters. Therefore, 1.2 minus 0 0.6, this is equal to 0 0.6. And we also have learned that this distance is equal to 1 half of 1.5, so this is equal to 0 0.75 meters. Therefore, this distance is equal to 0 0.6 plus 0 0.75, and that is equal to 1.35. Let me just transfer the dimensions on 
the other side because they're just identical. So this is 1.8 and this distance is 1.35 meters. Therefore, the slope of this member is 1.35 horizontal, 1.8 vertical. Or to reduce that, that is also equal to 3 horizontal, 4 vertical, 5 hypotenuse. So, FG and FH has a slope of 3 horizontal, 4 vertical, and 5 hypotenuse. Now we're ready to have summation FY equal to 0. We have negative FH, considering vertical component, 4 over 5, positive FG, considering vertical, also 4 over 5. This is equal to 0. Simplifying this, we have FH is equal to FG. This is our equation 1. For equation 2, of course, we have summation fx equal to 0. We have positive fh considering horizontal 3 over 5, positive fg considering horizontal also 3 over 5, positive df, which is 1.20, negative ef, which is 5.80, and this is equal to 0. Substituting now, so this will be our equation 2. Substituting now equation 1 into equation 2, we just replace or substitute FH with FG. So that we have FG times 3 over 5. Since this two quantities are similar or equal, we just multiply this by 2. And simplifying 1.20 minus 5.8 and transposing that to the right side of the equation, that is equal to 4.6. Now solving for Fg, Fg is equal to 3.83 kilonewtons and Fg is in tension, whereas Fh is just equal to Fg. Therefore, Fh is also equal to 3.83 kilonewtons but its sense is compressive. We now consider the free body diagram of joint H. We have the horizontal external 5 kN force acting to the right. We have force in member DH, which is tensile and has the magnitude of 5.36 kN. We also have the force in member FH, which is compressive and has a magnitude of 3.83 kilonewtons. And for the unknown forces, we have member HJ which we now assume to be tensile, and member HI, 
which we now assume to be compressive. dH and hj have the same slope, equal to 1 horizontal, 3 vertical, square root of 10, hypotenuse. And for fh, we recall its slope as 3 horizontal, 4 vertical, 5 hypotenuse. Now we're ready to have summation fy equal to 0. We have positive hj considering vertical 3 over square root of 10, negative dh which is 5.36 considering vertical 3 over square root of 10, positive fh which is 3.83 considering vertical 4 over 5. And this is equal to 0. Solving for hj, hj is equal to 2.13 kilonewtons, and this is in tension. Now let's have summation fx equal to 0. We have negative hi positive hg, which is 2.13. Considering horizontal, 1 over square root of 10. Negative dh, which is 5.36. Considering horizontal, 1 over square root of 10. Negative fh, which is 3.83. Considering horizontal, 3 over 5. Plus 5 equal to 0. Solving for hi, hi is equal to 1.68 kilonewtons, and this is in compression. hi is a compressive force. Let's now consider the free body diagram of joint G. wherein we have the force in member Fg, which is in tension equal to 3.83 kilonewtons. We also have the force in member Eg, which is in compression equal to 5 Point thirty six kilonewtons. And for the unknown forces, we have member GI, which we now assume to be compressive, and we also have member GK, which we also assume to be compressive. The slope of Fg is 3 horizontal, 4 vertical, 5 hypotenuse. Gk and Eg have, this, have the same slope equal to 1 horizontal, 3 vertical, square root of 10, hypotenuse. First, we have summation Fy equal to 0. We have negative gk, considering vertical, 3 over square root of 10, negative fg, which is 3.83, considering vertical, 4 over 5, positive eg, which is 5.36, considering vertical, 3 over square root of 10. And this is equal to 0. Solving for gk, gk is equal to 2.13 kilonewtons in compression.
Next, summation fx equal to zero. We have we have positive gi, positive gk, which is 2.13, considering horizontal, 1 over square root of 10, negative fg, which is 3.83, considering horizontal, 3 over 5, negative eg, which is 5.36, considering horizontal, 1 over over square root of 10. And this is equal to 0. Solving now for GI, GI is equal to 3.32 kilonewtons, also in compression. Considering now the free body diagram of joint I, we have force in member HI, which is in compression, and equal to 1.68 kilonewtons. Force in member GI, which is also in compression, equal to 3.32 kilonewtons. Unknown forces in member IK, which we now assume to be intention and force in member ij which we now assume to be in compression now we need to determine the slope of ij and ik by considering again this triangle Considering this triangle, we have known this distance to be equal to 0 0.6 meter. We also have known that this distance is equal to 1 half of 1.5, which is 0 0.75. And this vertical distance is 1.8 meters. Therefore, we have for this member, horizontal is 0 0.75, vertical is 1.8. And when we reduce that, it is also equal to 5 vertic uh, horizontal and 12 vertical. 5 horizontal, 12 vertical, 13 hypotenuse. Therefore, the slope of both ij and ik is equal to 5 horizontal, 12 vertical, 13 hypotenuse. Now, first, let's have summation fy equal to 0. We have negative ij considering vertical we have 12 over 13 positive ik considering vertical still 12 over 13 and this is equal to zero simplifying ij is equal to ik and this is our equation one for equation 2, of course, we have summation fx equal to 0. We have positive ij, considering horizontal 5 over 13, positive ik, considering horizontal is still 5 over 13, plus hi, which is 1.68 negative gi which is 3.32 and this is equal to zero this is our equation two substituting now substituting now equation one into equation two we simply substitute ij with ik so that we have 
ik times 5 over 13. Since these quantities are just equal, we simply multiply this by 2. And simplifying 1.68 minus 3.32 and transposing that to the right side of the equation, that is equal to 1.64. Solving for ik, ik is equal to 2.13 kilonewtons in tension and ij is also equal to ik which is 2.13 kilonewtons but it is in compression. Now that we're left with two joints, J and K, we're going to proceed with joint K because joint K is less complicated than joint J. Joint K has only three forces, whereas joint J has four. So considering the free body diagram of joint K, We have force in member IK, which is in tension and equal to 2.13 kilonewtons, and force in member GK, which is in compression and also equal to 2.13 kilonewtons, and the force in member JK. Now, we're not going to assume because it is evident that, that both the horizontal forces, horizontal components of IK and GK act to the left. Therefore, to balance that, JK should act to the right. Solving for JK, we have summation Fx equal to zero. We have positive JK, negative IK, which is 2.13. We need the slope of IK, which is equal to five horizontal, 12 vertical, 13 hypotenuse. Same with GK. The slope of GK is 1 horizontal, 3 vertical, square root of 10, hypotenuse. So going back to 2.13, considering horizontal, we have 5 over 13. Negative GK, which is also 2.13, considering horizontal, 1 over square root of 10. And this is equal to 0. Solving for JK, GK, I mean JK is equal to 1.49 kilonewtons and it is in compression. Now we have solved the actual force in each member of the transmission tower. We're going to use summation Fy for checking. So we have negative IK, which is negative 2.13, considering vertical. 12 over 13, positive GK, which is 2.13, considering vertical, 3 over square root of 10, should be equal to 0. And this is equal to 0 
which is almost equal to zero. Therefore, so it is almost equal to zero. Because uh, our values that we used are ground off to two decimal places. Using exact values, this will be equal to zero equal to zero. Nevertheless, this is still correct. Lastly, we consider a joint J for checking. We have the external horizontal force to the right, 3 kilonewtons, the compressive force in member JK equal to 1.49 kilonewtons, the tensile force in member HJ equal to 2.13 kilonewtons, with a slope of 1 horizontal, 3 vertical, square root of 10 hypotenuse and the compressive force in member ij which is also equal to 2.13 kilonewtons with a slope of 5 horizontal 12 vertical 13 hypotenuse for summation fx equal to 0 we have positive 3, negative JK, which is 1.49, negative HJ, which is 2.13. Considering horizontal, we have 1 over square root of 10. Negative IJ, which is also 2.13. Considering horizontal, we have 5 over 13 equal to 0. This is 0. 0 0.02 is almost equal to 0, which means that our calculations are correct. And for summation Fy equal to 0, we have negative Hg, which is 2.13, considering vertical 1 or 3 over square root of 10, positive Ig, which is 2.13, considering vertical 12 over 13 equal to 0. This is negative 0 0.05 is almost equal to 0, which again means that our calculations are correct. I reiterate that the values in the left side of the equation are not exactly equal to 0 because the values we used in our calculations were rounded off to two decimal places. If we have used exact values, the left side of the equation will also be equal to zero.